Oh, hello. Have you ever used a torch before, like the one I've got here? They're lots of fun to play with and can shine really brightly into the darkness and help you light the way. My name's Natasha and our story for Halloween is all about bringing light. Patch, the pumpkin, lived with all the other pumpkins in the pumpkin patch on the edge of town. They were very happy. They loved sitting in the sun, feeling all warm inside. Every day they grew bigger and rounder and more pumpkiny. But one evening, Patch noticed something odd. The sun went away a bit quicker than before. Perhaps the sun had somewhere else to go tonight, he thought. That's why he was in a bit of a rush. But the next night it happened again. In fact, it seemed as if the sun went away even faster this time. And the next morning, Patch noticed that it was arriving a bit later as well, and it didn't seem as warm as before. At the next meeting of the Pumpkin Parliament, Patch asked the assembled pumpkins a question. Has anyone noticed anything strange about the sun, he said. It's arriving later in the morning said the biggest pumpkin. And leaving earlier in the evening, said the tiniest pumpkin. And it's not as warm as it was, said the most average sized pumpkin. Exactly, said Patch. There's no doubt about it. The days are getting shorter. Immediately, a pumpkin panic broke out. Some pumpkins began to cry, others bounced up and down anxiously. What are we going to do, they cried. How will we keep warm and bright and orange? There's no need for a pumpkin panic, said Patch. We just have to store all the sunlight inside ourselves. Don't give away any of your warmth. Preserve your energy. Don't do any extra activities. No one could quite work out what this meant as being pumpkins, they didn't do any extra activities anyway. They just sat there. But they calmed down because Patch sounded like he knew what he was doing. So for the next few days and nights, each pumpkin stayed very still and thought warm thoughts and tried very hard to keep their heat to themselves. But it didn't work. The sun rose later and set sooner the days turned colder. Trying to keep the sun's warmth to themselves hadn't changed anything. Something must be done, thought Patch. I must consult the wise but grumpy owl. Now, there are three things that every pumpkin knows about the wise but grumpy owl. One, he's wise. Two, he's grumpy. And three, he's an owl. Those are good and generally helpful things to know, but the problem was that you never knew what time he was going to fly over the field. So that night, Patch stayed awake, listening for him. And just when he thought nothing was going to happen, he heard a hoot. Wise but grumpy owl, called Patch. The owl landed nearby. Less of the shouting, he said grumpily. You'll scare the mice. What's happening to the sun? asked Patch, ignoring him. The days are getting shorter and we're getting colder. Yes, said the owl, even more grumpily. That happens at this time of year. But what can we do about it? How do we keep warm? The wise but grumpy owl thought for a moment. You've got to stick together, he said. That's how we animals do it. And with that, he flew off, grumpily. Patch and his friends are in a bit of trouble now that the sun is disappearing, ready for winter. The next night, as the sun set, Patch gathered the pumpkins together in a big circle. The tiniest pumpkins were in the middle, the biggest pumpkins were on the outside, the most average sized pumpkins were in between, and they all shared their warmth. And something started to happen. Right in the middle of the circle, the tiniest pumpkins began to glow with light. And gradually, that warmth spread out to the others. It wasn't much, but that night, for the first time in ages, the pumpkins were not cold. As morning broke, the wise but grumpy owl flew by. How's it going? 
he hooted. We all huddled together and it made us warmer, said Patch. He thought for a moment. But I don't think it will be enough if it gets really cold. Maybe looking after your own kind only makes you a bit warmer, said the owl. Maybe for more warmth, you have to go further afield. As the days went by, the pumpkins continued to share their warmth. But the wise but grumpy owl was right. Sharing just among themselves wasn't enough. So at the next meeting of the pumpkin parliament, Patch made an announcement. Fellow pumpkins, he said, we have shared our warmth and that's good, but it's still getting colder. We have to bring more warmth into our lives. What can we do? asked the assembled pumpkins. I'm going to do what the wise but grumpy owl suggested, said Patch. I'm going to go further afield. There were gasps of pumpkin panic. There was anxious bouncing. Only the bravest, most foolhardy pumpkins had ever gone anywhere near the edge of the field. Beyond that, there was the fence and then something called the road. Only one pumpkin in all pumpkin history had ever gone under the fence and onto the road. And that is why he became known as Roderick, the entirely squashed. You can't leave the field, said the biggest pumpkin. You can't go under the fence, said the tiniest pumpkin. You can't go over the road said the most average sized pumpkin, pausing dramatically. I can't just sit and wait for the darkness to take us, said Patch. I'm going to have to give it a try. The next day, Patch set off. He could feel the eyes of all the other pumpkins watching him as he made his way to the edge of the field. As he got to the fence, everything in him wanted to turn back, but he didn't. He took a deep breath and squeezed himself under the lowest bar. It took a lot of effort. In fact, if Patch had waited a day longer, he might have grown too big. But with a final push, he was under. He turned and looked back at all his friends. Huddle together for warmth, he called. Look after each other. I'll be back as soon as I can. For the first time in his life, Patch was outside the field, and ahead of him was the road. Ever since the dawn of pumpkin history, pumpkins had learned to fear the road and the strange metal beasts who lived there. Only Roderick had ever dared to go on the road, and look what happened to him. He ended up entirely squashed, in case you've forgotten. The road was nothing like the field. It was hard, as if the earth had been melted together in a sheet. Patch checked carefully each way, but he couldn't see any metal beasts, so he set off. He was almost halfway across when he heard a noise. <gasps> it was a metal beast. A metal beast was coming. There was a terrible roar and a fierce glare of lights. He was going to be squashed. He shut his eyes and whoosh! Patch felt the hot breath of the metal beast as it flashed past him. <gasps> That was close. And worse was still to come. As Patch sat there shaking like a leaf, whoosh, another metal beast rushed past him on the other side. And then another and another, whoosh, 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 went the metal beasts. Patch realised that as long as he stayed in the middle of the road, he was safe. But if he went one step further, he would be known as Patch the also entirely squashed. Help me, he cried. Somebody, anybody. Hello, said a voice. How did you get here? Patch looked up in surprise. An old woman was standing in the middle of the road looking down on him. I, I, I'm trying to get over, explained Patch in a shaky voice. I need to help my people bring back some warmth. I see, said the old lady. Well, you can't stay here. You'll be entirely squashed. She picked him up and in a few strides they were on the other side of the road. The old woman put Patch down carefully. Thank you, said Patch. You saved me. 
You're very welcome, said the old woman. How are you feeling? Patch noticed that the tiny flame inside of him had actually grown brighter. I feel warm, he said, warmer than I was. Ah, well, said the old woman gently, that's the thing. It's helping each other that keeps the light shining. She gave Patch a friendly pat. And it only gets bigger when you give it away. Just think about that as you go on. And with that, she was gone. Once across the road, Patch could see that there was a rough dirt track lined with houses. It seemed to Patch that they were not very good houses. They were built mainly out of old bits of wood and metal and plastic. Outside one house, he found a mother and her children staring glumly at a small pile of wood. Our fire has gone out, the mother said to him. If we don't light it again, we won't be able to eat. Patch thought for a moment. He remembered what the old woman said. Would you like some of my flame? he asked. The mother looked at him anxiously. Do you have enough to spare? I don't know, said Patch, but someone just helped me, so I think I should do the same. The mother carefully brought a bundle of small twigs over to Patch and held them close to him. It didn't take long before her little bundle of twigs caught a light and she was able to get a roaring fire going. And Patch found something odd. He had given away some of his flame, but if anything, the fire inside him was burning brighter than before. Thank you, said the mother. Now we can eat. You're welcome, said Patch. He continued down the street. Here it was colder, darker. He saw a workman looking very cold. Are you OK? asked Patch. I can't get my hands warm enough to do my work, said the workman. You can warm them on me if you like, said Patch. That's very kind of you. The workman held his hands to Patch's sides and before long he felt a lot warmer. Thank you, said the workman. Now I can get started and earn some money for my family. You're welcome, said Patch. Again, Patch noticed that far from diminishing, the heat and light inside him had actually grown. By now, the sun was beginning to go down. Further down the road, Patch came across an elderly man looking lost. Are you OK? said Patch. It's dark and I can't see very well, said the old man. I need to get back to my home. By now, the light inside Patch was glowing quite brightly. Use my light, Patch said. Follow me, I'll lead you home. So Patch burned as bright as he could and he led the man through the darkness and back to his house. Thank you, said the elderly man. I can see a lot more clearly now. And now, Patch was certain of it. Despite sharing his warmth and light with the mother and the workman and the elderly man, he had more of it than ever. He was burning brighter and warmer than ever before. At last, he knew what he had to do and he needed to get home as fast as he could. Ready for the final part of our story with Patch? I am. At the edge of the road, he stopped nervously. You seem brighter than before, said a familiar voice. It was the old woman who had helped him at the beginning of the day. Yes, said Patch, it's amazing. I kept thinking I would run out of light or heat, but every time I helped someone, it just got brighter. I feel warm and glowing and alive. No one ever really comes to life until there is a light inside them, said the old woman. She smiled and Patch's flame seemed to burn brighter still. Once again, the old woman lifted him up and carried him across the road. Any time you need to get across the road to help others, you just call on me, she said. Patch squeezed himself under the fence and back into the field. All the pumpkins were amazed at how warm and bright he was. How did you get like that? they asked. 
It just happened when I started helping people, said Patch. And we've all got to do the same. Give our light and our warmth away to everyone. All the next day, the pumpkins were very busy. They woke up the wise but grumpy Ooh. owl and told him to take a message across the road. He was very grumpy about it, but he agreed. Then they rolled around in the middle of the field to create a wide, flat space. Of course, as they helped each other, their lights glowed ever more brightly. So as night fell, a gentle orange light filled the sky. And then people started to arrive. They had heard a message from the owl that they could come and get warm. So they crossed the road. And what they found was amazing. A great glowing orange ring of pumpkins, all alight and alive. And the people started to laugh and sing. Some of them brought instruments and started to play tunes. And soon everyone was dancing by the pumpkin light. Patch could see the mother and her family dishing out their soup to everyone. The workman was there playing a guitar that he'd made from an old wooden box. And right in the middle of the dance, the elderly man was whirling around, not caring if he bumped into people and drumming out a rhythm with his stick. Even the old woman was there, moving effortlessly among the dancers. She smiled and laughed as she danced and it made Patch's light burn brighter than ever. And that was the start of a grand tradition. Ever since then, every autumn in that place, the pumpkins light up and the music plays and everyone dances away the end of summer. The pumpkins have been giving away their light ever since. And the strange thing is, the more they give it away, the brighter it seems to glow. Patch discovered that sharing light with others helped everyone. The mother and her children, the workman, the elderly man, and all of his pumpkin friends too. And that's what God wants us to do, to love and help others, no matter where in the world they live. I hope you enjoyed Patch's story. Thanks for listening.